Hello and welcome to Neuro Habits. This is part one of a video presentation on dyslexia and alexia. In part one of this presentation, I will go over what is dyslexia, the controversy of a dyslexia, why it is difficult to do research on dyslexia, what are some of the results from research so far, and what can we do to study dyslexia. What is dyslexia? It is a developmental inability or difficulty to read that is not due to vision problems. The symptoms appear at a very young age, usually as soon as the child learns how to read. There are a number of symptoms related to dyslexia, but they are all related to a difficulty in reading or producing the sounds of the written words. There is another condition that has similar reading disorders as dyslexia, and in part two of this presentation, I will give a list of the symptoms. If you do a quick research online, you will find that there is a controversy over dyslexia. To me, this is due to a misunderstanding of different parties. On one hand, research says that dyslexia is genetic. It has genetic factors to it. When they hear this, some people understand it as meaning that dyslexia is fixed. It's a problem that is fixed, it's genetic. It means that nothing can be done. And this can make them pretty angry because they know this is not true. They know that people with dyslexia are able to improve their abilities and that those symptoms evolve over time. On the other hand, there are some very smart and clever people that have found different teaching strategies that really improve the ability to read of people with dyslexia. And some people, when they see this, they think it proves that dyslexia does not exist, that there is no problem with people labeled as dyslexic, that, that the whole thing is just a creation of the schools that are inadequate in teaching some children how to read. So it's not a problem with a child, but it is a problem with the school system. Well, it is a fact that research has shown that there might be a genetic basis to dyslexia. This does not mean that someone with dyslexia will never be able to read. It just shows that there seems to be some genetic factors underlying the problem in some people at least. But the brain learns all the time and the brain can develop other strategies for learning how to read. At the same time, it is important to remember that while it is true that different teaching strategies can greatly help children labeled as dyslexics, it is also a fact that under the traditional school system, some children have difficulty learning and some don't. This shows that there is a difference in brain functionality between these two groups of children. It does not mean that one group is totally unable to read ever, but it does show that the brains work differently. Why is it difficult to do research on dyslexia? The reason for the difficulty in studying dyslexia is because we basically only have two ways of looking at, the, at a living brain, and that is fMRI studies or PET scan studies, both of which look for activation patterns in the brain. Now, a child that grows with dyslexia, the brain grows with the child, and as the child is growing, the brain keeps on trying to find new ways, new strategies to compensate for the problem. So in an fMRI study, someone with dyslexia will show slightly different activation patterns than someone without dyslexia. But it is very difficult to know which part of the different activation pattern is related to the overcoming strategies and which part is related to the broken part of the brain. We can only guess, basically, 
and use statistics, but it is not a foolproof method and it is very hard to find cause and effect relationships. What are the results so far? Research tends to show that, that there might be some genetic factors underlying dyslexia. fMRI research also shows that people with dyslexia tend to have a greater activation of the frontal lobes and a decrease of activation in the occipital lobe in, at the back of the brain. So how can we study dyslexia then? Well, there is a similar condition to dyslexia, which is called alexia. Alexia is acquired dyslexia. Basically, it is people who have lived their whole lives without any reading difficulties. And then at some point, they have an accident or a stroke or some kind of lesion at a very specific part of the brain. And following this accident, they can't read anymore. So why is alexia so much more useful for studying reading difficulties is because we have a brain that can read so we have a average brain then there is one very specific part of the brain that gets broken and then the brain can't read and that person has no overcoming strategies all of this makes it much easier to make inferences as to which areas in the brain are involved in reading before we go on to part two of this presentation, I would like to just give you some interesting facts about reading. The process of reading is very different from what we usually think it is. We think that our brain read, read the letters and then makes, transform those letters into words. And that's how we read. But Brain damage shows that this is not exactly true. For example, it is possible to be able to not be able to read, but really not be able to read, but have virtually no problem writing. There are patients, there are cases like this, where someone is totally unable to read, but can write with virtually no problem but they cannot read their own writing. However, if that, if that person is blindfolded and someone writes, spells the letter of a word such as cat on the palm of the hand, the person will be able to read that word. So this shows that a problem of, like this shows that a reading disability is disability might not mean that there is a problem of, of language. The, the, mental, the mental lexicon is intact. It's just the connection between the visual system and this storage of words of language that is damaged. Um, in, the case, in the cases of dyslexia and people who have lesser activity in the, occipit in the occipital lobe, which is, which is related to vision, it might, it might be worthwhile to see if those people are able to learn how to read with their fingers. Like blind people, they might have no problems in that case. Some people are, all, are also able to read full words, but unable to read single letters. Some people are able to read single letters, but totally unable to read full words. Some people are able to read concrete words, but unable to read abstract words. Reading is not as easy as it seems. It feels easy because all of those processes are very, very well integrated in the brain. But in reality, reading is a very complex mechanism that we haven't fully under that, that we don't fully understand yet. Watch part two of this presentation on dyslexia and alexia for a list of symptoms of alexia and brain damage.
Thank you for watching this video. Please visit www.neurohabits.com for more information, videos, and other cool brain stuff.